welcome to the finals here at the StarCityGames.com Indianapolis Open Weekend. Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan here in the booth. We've got Nick Miller down there on the sideboard doing a write-up of our finals match between Pete Ingram playing Jeskai Control and Andrew Jessup playing Green Blue Infect. You see the jerseys, they look the same because they're on the same team, TeamMetagameGurus.com, and they have dominated this weekend here in Indianapolis. But only one of them can walk out of here with the trophy, the $5,000 and the 30 SCG points. We'll see if it's going to be Pete or Andrew in this matchup. And both of these players now thrown into the thick of things in terms of the Season 2 race for the Players' Championship. Oh, without question. And you know, especially with Jim Davis spearheading this team and how competitive he is, you have to imagine the rest of the guys are as competitive as well. And they got one goal in mind, get as many people to the Players' Championship as they can. And a dominating performance here for Ingram. First overall seed, I believe, got out of the Swiss rounds 13-1-1. One and one. Yeah. And... Uh, modern is definitely a nice format to have the die roll throughout the whole elimination rounds. Well, for me, this deck is the real deal. Um, I kind of like Jeskai when you brought it up at our pregame show at the Columbus Invitational. Mm -hmm. just made a lot of sense. It works really well with Ancestral Visions. Uh, but Ancestral Vision isn't, in the, isn't even in the main deck. There's a couple copies in the sideboard. Now, I don't know if that's right or not. You know, We'll see how the, the format and the, the deck kind of the paces that it goes through and how it develops. But um, every time we've watched Pete, I've liked what I've seen. Mm-hmm. You know, it's also very nice when you win the die roll and have it for the whole top eight. That's true. A remand. Yeah. <laughs> it's just there are, no, there are no bad cards in this deck. The, the only thing that is debatable is the Ember Cool, and the way the games play out and that thing looming, it's not even debatable at all to me. Well, the bad cards in the deck, and it's bad in quotes, but the bad cards in the deck are matchups where you don't, where four Bolt, three Lightning Helix, two Electrolyze, and four Path to Exile don't mean very much. Yeah. There are not a lot of those. Ingram's hand here. Vendillion Click, Remand, Lightning Helix, along with a Mountain, Glacial Fortress, an Island, and the land that he played for the turn in Arid Mesa. One removal, one counter. Not the hardest hand to work through here for Jessup. Could certainly see a lot worse. The two mana interaction is a lot easier to trump with pump spells and counter spells than the one mana interaction. Jessup going to fall down to 16 now. Well, that's a noble hierarch as Ingram will sacrifice that Arid Mace. So we'll see what land Pete wants to search up. That's a steam vents right there. Always fun to play against a friend and a teammate in the finals of a tournament, but deep down, you know you want to beat him. Yeah, it's like any other match. I mean, it makes the aftermath if you lose a little bit easier. Yeah. Maybe. Unless there's just resentment right below the surface. Yeah, you know, if, like, for example, someone were to keep a card that they beat you with in a draft open after they sell the rest of their collection. Yeah. Like, if someone were to keep, like, in a Johnny Collar prize that they got lucky to draw every game to have on turn three and then sell all of their other cards but keep the Ajani and then let you know. Listen, I'm not the one who was mulliganing to... Or I, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't, I didn't, whoa, whoa. I didn't bring up who did this. I'm not saying... I didn't bring up who did this. not the one who discarded a hand size on turn two, Mr. I mulligan aggressively, as more aggressively than anyone else on the planet. Ink Moth Nexus is the land here for Andrew. And now there's a Blighted Agent. I'm not naming names, Patrick. Right. Okay. But if you were, it yeah. sounds shockingly similar to something that happened between the two of us <laughs> several years ago. A remand on the Blighted Agent. However, there is a Glistener Elf to follow that up with. This is Lightning Helix to take care of the Glistener Elf. And you're always starting to see some of the trouble with the with the two-minute interaction. Ingram was able to play one spell. Jessup could play two. Ingram again plays one spell. Now the window is open for, for Jessup to do all sorts of things. Yep. That's why it's a lot of pressure in the matchup on Ingram to be drawing a lot of bolts and paths. The helixes and the counter spells, they could be okay. But the, the premium is really the one-mana stuff. Another lightning helix. A Medellin click, a cryptic command, along with an island and a mountain is the hand there for Pete Ingram. The shields are down. You can get killed here. It's possible. Yeah. Neogenic growth, become immense. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Or two, uh, or pl two plus fours. It doesn't even have to be that fancy. Yeah, that's actually true. Not saying it's likely, but shows, it goes to show you Ingram here with a removal spell and a remand on the play and can still get killed on the third turn. And it's actually so important, too, for Ingram that he does kill in the main phase like he did. Yep. Especially with damage based removal, like Lightning Helix and Lightning Bolt, you want to kill him, the shields are down. But then this opens up the window for you to get killed on the way back. And 
Jessup thinking quite a bit here. Does have a Pendlehaven, Wooded Foothills. We know there's a Blighted Agent in the hand. Looks like a Might of Old Croatia as well. How does he want to move forward? There's Wooded Foothills. And now there is a forest. Noble Hyrax going to tap for a little bit of mana. Fire up the old Inkmoth Nexus. It's just an attack for two, in fact. Syngram's going to go up to two, in fact. And now there's a Blighted Asian. Yeah, and this is really bad news here for Ingram, who's still not in a position to play multiple spells in a turn. You know, he has a, his hand. Cryptic Command is fine, but that's basically, you know, nothing happens. You still need to find answers the following turn. Uh, Vendillion Click is three mana. Helix is two, so next turn he can't play both spells in one turn. And, and Jessup, with multiple threats in play, still a handful of spells, is forcing Ingram here to be able to produce multiple spells in one turn to keep up. Ingram will draw. Basic Mountain. I think he put up, he drew Pat to Exile this turn. Which it's a good draw. Huge deal here. Um, one, it's his best card in the matchup. And two, now he has something to do on top of Vendillion Click to maybe clean up this battlefield a little bit. Let's see what this is. Noble Hierarch. There's a Pendlehaven for the land for the turn. Andrew would like to attack. It just depends on if Pete will let him or not. Pete has a Cryptic Command in hand and Triple Blue to be able to cast it. Here Jess comes Blighted Agent. Jessup with one copy of Spell Pierce in the deck. That's the risk here of the Cryptic Command. That's a concern. Cryptic is meh in this matchup. A, a way for Ingram here to play around the potential one Spell Pierce is just with Path on the Blighted Agent and then Vendillion Click. There's no way for Spell Pierce to do anything about this. Sure. There is a Path on the Blighted Agent. There's a basic forest. So what's next here for Andrew Jessup is the question. As he's trying to beat a difficult matchup here in the finals of Indianapolis. It's starting to get pretty hard here. Uh, I think with Ingram now having Vendillion click to, mm -hmm. to block and trade with the Nexus and attack the hand. Sees the might of Old Crozier. You take that or leave it. I mean, I would, I, I would imagine, I guess you, I don't know, this is tough. Because your Vendillion Click doesn't really block right now because of all the pump effects. So at that point, you might as well leave it and try to build towards Cryptic Command or Lightning Helix as your answer. Oh, I think Ingram's kind of realizing that this thing is not a very good blocker. You're already at 13. I might as well get attacking. Sacred Foundry. Entering the battlefield tapped. Pass the turn back. Don't know if I love entering the battlefield tapped there. He's got a lot of life to work with. Yep. And he is playing against Infect after and all. And he gains a, just kind of a lot of life over the course of just doing his stuff too with yeah. Helix. Yeah, that, could, that could come back to hurt him. Maybe, maybe not, but it's a minor thing. And you know, Pete's got a good idea of what's going on in Andrew's hand right now. He knows about the Mind of Old Corrosion and land. 
It's a kind of weird spot because of all the pump effects here that are in, in Jessup's hand and on the table. The Vendillion click does not trade with the Inkbot Nexus, assuming that you can resolve Pendlehaven and your Exalted triggers. Here comes Inky. At least he's going to try to. Does Ingram make his move now? Or does he simply wait? Exalted triggers on the stack. There's a Pendlehaven activation. I mean, Ingram might have to just say, okay, take these hits, and Cryptic to bounce your Nexus, draw a card, try to stave off the Nexus as attacker for a little while, hmm. Okay. and hope to find a Snapcaster Major, a Path to Exile, to give himself a permanent answer to the Nexus. You just don't think Lightning Helix can really do much here? Uh, well, the problem is, you have to Lightning Helix before combat, because once the Exalted Triggers occur in the Pendlehaven, it's outside of Helix range, yep. and you know that he's got the Pump Spell in his hand anyway. Yep. So his hand doesn't really do a whole lot to contain this. Oh, here's Cryptic. Looks like the infect damage came through. Yep, and now we head back Ingram's way. Nahiri is the other path here for Ingram. If he can Nahiri and protect it for a few turns, he can just win that way. All right. Well, you might be thinking it might be six Infect at home, but it looks like Andrew Jessup actually missed one of the Exalted Triggers. So it's actually five Infect, which means that the next attack that he made last turn is actually not lethal. Mm -hmm. Breeding pool, the land going to be searched up there from Verdant Catacombs. So Ingram here holding back with the Vendillion click because the Noble Hierarchs can pressure Nahiri. Yep. And I think Ingram's plan here is block for one turn plus Nahiri again. Hope that I find Path or Snapcaster Mage or some removal spells to block for another turn. And then I can ultimate Nahiri. Go get Emrakul. Jessup's a 12. There we go. Sure. So Ingram's going to take a very defensive stance right now and just try to hold on for two turns. And then Emrakul can clean it up. Exactly. And to that end, that's why he's not attacking with the Vanillion click, because he'd rather trade it off with the Noble Hierarch. Also slows down Jessup's clock in, in some other respects after the Nexus gets replayed. And it's a real game changer for, for Just Guy Control. This was looking like the type of game where it's not clear Ingram has the tools to hold on for the whole game, and it's not clear his defensive measures line up the right way. But because of Nahiri, now all he has to do is hold on for a couple turns and he can turn around and win the game very fast. So you see a bit of a dispute on how much Exalted damage was attacked for in the previous turn. Nothing like a missed trigger between friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Truer words, my friend. <laughs> Truer words. You see the head judge there, going to come on down, figure right. out exactly where they're at. And from Jessup's perspective, this is not a small point, because if Ingram is at six, then Pendlehaven plus Exalted Triggers on his Nexus represents a lethal attack, and Ingram has to respond to just that. He yep. does not have to add a pump spell to the equation to force Ingram to move. Yeah, so it actually changes quite a bit here. So we're going to get this one sorted out, but in the meantime... As it looks like the head judge is going to have a conversation with the table judge that was down there. We can talk about a couple things like the StarCityGames.com newsletter, where you'll be able to rewatch the match of the week on the SCD Tour, which might be this one, and a whole bunch more. Yeah, a lot of information about the going on Star City Games, latest information about the SCG Tour, with the selected SCG Tour match of the week for you to watch, exclusive deck lists and advice from many of your favorite Star City Games columnists, an exclusive cardboard crack comic, and best up, signing up is free at go.starcitygames.com slash newsletter. It's fun to take a look at that as we take a look back at the match here for Pete Ingram and Andrew Jessup. I'll we'll get a ruling here eventually, I and mean, as soon as we know it is, we'll certainly communicate it to you. But for both of these players, you know, this is, this is a big one here because Ingram's clearly looking to block 
with the Abed Dilling click this turn and trade with the Noble Hierarch. If a Jessup uses the pump spell in combat to get the click out of the way, suddenly you have a Nexus on the battlefield and four points of pump, three points of pump on board. I've seen people get in the habit of, you know, I'm going to uh, balk at this miss trigger and try to fight for it just, because, just for the sake of doing it. The difference between Ingram being at five or six in fact is a huge deal. Just so you're aware of what the ruling is at home, game rules violation for missing the announced trigger. So, if we continue on. Noble Hierarch tried to go after Nahiri. Vendilink Luke said, nope, I'm hanging out here to block. Thank you much. This is a Serum Visions. Cryptic Command of the draw. That might be really good. Well, not castable unless he finds a blue land. Yep, not castable just yet. You are right. Spell Snare. I don't see a blue land, though. Path Exile, Lightning Helix over there. I suppose Nahiri could find it. Hasn't used that yet this turn. Uh, I don't know how much better the possibility... Finding a blue mana, I don't know how much value it has right now, because most of what Ingram has to consider here is what happens if Jessup rips Spell Pierce and can fight me inside of combat. Cryptic Command's the worst case scenario for him to have in hand at that point. So playing, trying to find land number five to Cryptic here may not be good if Spell Pierce is the one card you're most concerned about, because you can't pay a Spell Pierce to that. Fair. Back to Andrew Jessup now. Emrakrul is hungry. Can Andrew stop it from arriving? And, you know, what kind of measures is he going to go through to stop it? That's the other question. Is he going to attack here with Inkbot, Nexus, Glister, Elf, Noble Hierarch, all towards that? Would he just use power spells just to, just to keep himself alive from dying to that? Looks uh, like Noble Hierarch's the only one that's going to go over there. Yeah, I, I think that Jess's best route to win this involves just going for it this turn. Even if he stays off Emrakul for a turn, I don't think that's a long-term path to get back into it. Yeah, okay, it looks like Might of Old Kuroja is going to target Glistener Elf. So when you say go for it, you say go for Nahiri or go for the kill? The kill. Okay. Playing against a deck with, with nothing but counter spells and removal, uh, you know. Uh, even if you stave off death for a turn. What, what's the long-term goal here? Well, as we mentioned, Mightable Croce is starting on Glistener Elf. Ingram is going to respond with, I believe, Lightning Helix. Yes. Pendlehaven will target Glistener Elf. Mutagenic Growth is going to try to save Glistener Elf. And with Path to Exile in Ingram's hand, I'm not a big fan of the line that he took here. Okay. Because now Spell Pierce is in the equation. What I would have done here, I think, is just say, okay, pump whichever one you're going to pump, and then path it inside of combat. I, I, I suppose at that point you're risking Vines of Vastwood, but the way that this played out, Vines of Vastwood still... It's just gonna awesome. It's still going to KO you. And the way that this is set up, now all Jessup needs is a spell pierce and, and Ingram's trapped. I mean, Eugenic Growth is going to resolve along with the Pendle Haven. Now the Mind of a Crozier resolves. And what I like here is firing up the Ink Moth Nexus as well. And he's going to go after Pete. That's a path to exile. But the last card in Jessup's hand is a doozy. It's a become immense mm. on the Ink Moth Nexus, which means Andrew had it all, and it all is good enough. Andrew Jessup going to win game number one here over Pete Ingram. Green, blue, infect. Ooh. Up a game over Jess Guy Control. That was, and I guess with Jessup having it all rolled up, there was no way for Helix plus path to defend himself from mm -hmm. it. Still excellent sequencing there by Jessup. Very impressive win. Let's take a look at the sideboards. We're going to start with Pete Ingram and his two Ancestral Vision, two Crumble to Dust, two Negate, two Anger of the Gods. A lot of one-ups here in Vendillion Click Dispel, Tommy Reinforcements, Celestial Purge, Engineer Explosives, Wear, Tear, and a Stony Silence. 
That that game was great. I'm just still kind of <laughs> in recovery. That was a really was good, a good one. one. Uh, a lot of good options here. I, I like the two copies of Negate, the Dispel, um, the Engineer Explosives, and the Wear Tear. I think are all are solid cards. They're not the cheapest forms of interaction besides the Dispel, which is part of the problem, but a lot of them are solid two-for-ones. There are a lot of information. Um, they're flexible. Uh, the, some upgrades here for Ingram. On the other side of things here for Andrew Jessup, two spell pierce to dispel, two dismember a twisted image, a graft digger's cage, four kitchen finks, the dryad arbor, and three nature's clan. Um, I, I can't see going much deeper than two spell pierce, one dispel, which is still, uh, again, huge upgrades here for, for Jessup to be able to fight back against the, the two plus mana spells more efficiently. Uh, and I think he wants a sideboard light for the matchup anyway. Well, that gives you an idea what both players are working with here. So. We'll let them sideboard, get ready for game number two. Peter will be on the play. We'll talk one last time this weekend about the StarCityGames.com weekly sale that is taking place. You can uh, do your spiel. You're really good at this. It's a wholesale sale. It's a hail sale on wholesale goods. It ends tomorrow, 10.59 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, selected wholesale lots. These are often cycles of, of commons and uncommons, uh, boxes you can draft out of, ways to get some people who are new to Magic started uh, with collections like low-level dual lands and things of that nature. Anyhow, the sale ends tomorrow, 10.59 a.m. Every week, there's a new weekly sale over at Star City Games, so make sure to be checking back to the website Monday, 11 o'clock a.m. for the new sale. Well done. Thanks. Very well done. So going back to that last turn there, Ingram plussed the Nahiri, discarded nothing, which is something that you're allowed to do, and then passed. Mm -hmm. If you are not playing towards Cryptic Command, and you mentioned that line of play, why not dig for Blue Banner to try to set yourself up for Cryptic Command? And I, I think as things turned out, it's possible that Cryptic Command plus Path to Exile might have been enough to, to win the game there. So there was some merit to it. But I don't understand plussing the Nahiri and not discarding the Cryptic Command if you're not going to try to find the land. Well, the card, I, the card I want to discard was the Spell Snare. That's, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, whatever you want to discard in that spot is, is okay. I don't understand not discarding anything and holding on to a Cryptic Command that you can't cast that turn, when that game is going to be decided inside of one turn anyway. Either Jessup's killing you, or he has to spend so many resources to, to kill your Nahiri, or can't touch your, your Nahiri at all, and then you ultimate it. So I can get behind, discard Spell Pierce, and dig for a land. I can get behind, discard Cryptic Command, and look for a Lightning Bolt or a Path or some other cheap form of interaction. But I'm a little perplexed by don't discard anything when you have a dead Cryptic Command in your hand, and the game is going to be resolved inside of one turn regardless. Fair enough. Well, hopefully Peter Ingram can tie things up here for his sake. Work his way towards his first open title here on the SCG Tours. to learn a little bit more about the 25-year-old from New York, member of Team Metagames gurus.com as you do know it's his third open top eight now he's got one invitational top eight as well I'm a very large coheed and cumbria fan much like myself and good friends with ben friedman alex Magelton. he's got to tie things up though to get to game number three against his teammate and good friend andrew jessup who is looking to uh i'd say have some bragging rights against his brother Oh, this is How's a big one. Sound? I mean, a lot on the line here. Absolutely. Trying to get themselves to the Players' Championship, and the, the the boost of points from winning an Open is a huge deal. You want that trophy for the first time. You want bragging rights against one of your teammates squaring off in the finals. A lot riding on this one. Absolutely. Now, for Andrew, as we found out as well, he has a – this will be his fourth Open Top 8. He's lost two of them in the finals, so if he lost this one in the finals, it will be a third crushing defeat in the finals. Never a great time to lose in the elimination rounds, of course, but you never like to lose in the finals, especially when you're up a game. So we'll see how things do go because, hey, even though he won game one, I think he played very well. Yes. Um, this is still a really hard matchup. This is not easy by any stretch of the imagination. So we'll see. Fortunately for Jessup, it's not like Ingram's sideboard is overloaded with awesome cards here. Outside of the spell, most of the stuff here is either situational or two or more mana. Looks like Jessup going to take a mulligan. Not happy with the starting seven while Ingram is. I'm kind of curious to see how this Jess guy control deck, win or lose, how it's going to affect things for Modern Weekend next weekend. I think this might be one of the decks to beat now. And, and there's so much flexibility, too, with how you construct the deck list. You know, the, the counter spells here, two spells near, two mana leak, three remand, two cryptic command. Removal spells, four path, four bolt, three helix, two electrolyze. That, to me, suggests that there's a lot of different ways you could load the counter spells or load the removal, for depending on what type of matchups you're trying to fight. I agree. 
It's sort of a mismatch right now. I, I mean, I think you're you're definitely priced into the four four path and four bolt, uh, but the counter spells and the remaining of the removal feels pretty malleable to me. Let's see if Jessup likes the six that he's looking at. He's thinking it over. He saw him reach for the deck once already. Keeper, keeper, here we go. And Jessup, Cataxium Pro, let's see what you're working with. <laughs> Two bolts, Snapcaster Mage, Negate, Glacial Fortress, Steam Vents. This is the type of hand um, that you're seeing here from Ingram that really necessitates Inkbloth Nexus on Jessup's side because yeah. he needs to have a threat and be able to wait and assemble a hand that can play over the top. If he's just casting Glycerin Ellis and Blight Agents, he's going to get swallowed up by the bolts and Snapcaster Mages. But if he's able to find a Nexus, then he can sort of just sit there and wait while Ingram's not really doing anything and try to win one big battle. There's a basic forest. Doesn't need the breeding pool just yet. And now there is a Noble Hierarch. And I've asked you this question a couple of times. I'll ask it to you again. Bolt that or save it for infect threats? Especially when your opponent's taking a mulligan. Uh, I think... That my preference here is to bolt. Uh, I think Ingram kind of just wants to act uh, because he's got Snapcaster Mage and some spells. Um, I, I don't really want to just hang back with this purely reactive hand that Jessup knows about. He knows about everything. Um, so it, it's very bad news for, for Ingram, for example, if Jessup has a Nexus and now has a lot of mana and an Exalted thing to work with. I think you're better off just killing it in that spot. Path Exile, the draw. And that makes the hand perfect, because now Ingram also has an answer to Inkmoth Nexus. He's very well situated now. He'll play a Steam Vents past the turn back. Let's go Andrew Jessup's way. He'll untap the single forest. Draw a card. Mines of Vastwood in hand already. Pendlehaven, the draw step. And Jessup might be thinking about casting another Gataxian Probe, but I don't think he's going to like what he sees on the other side, because now he knows that Ingram picked up a Path Exile. That said, he'll draw a card. Vines of Astwood. There's a Wooded Foothills. Kick it over to Pete, who drew a Lightning Helix. There's Glacial Fortress. Pass the turn back. Jessup probably going to likely dig up a breeding pool here. Now your hope here, if you're on Jessup's side, you're kind of hoping for two things. One, you have to find an Inkbot Nexus because he doesn't have a threat right now. The second thing, is you would really like Ingram to be missing land drops. Because if Ingram just keeps playing lands, there's it's going to be very hard for Chessa to win the battle over the pump spells versus removal whenever it happens. If Ingram's jammed up on mana, suddenly it's very different. Here's Snapcaster Mage. And Lightning Bolt's going upstairs. And I, and I like what Pete's doing here. He's getting some aggression going. I, I love this play too. You know, it's, it's tempting in the spot to just sit back on this reactive hand forever. But he knows that the Impact deck is able to win battles when the stack gets big because it's so efficient in those sort of fights. Also, Jessup falls to nine now. It doesn't take too long to finish out the game, and you can probably hold on with your, your Bolt and your Path and your Negate. Can't forget about the Lightning Helix, too. Yeah. All of a sudden, we're just going upstairs with these Burn Spells. Jessup will draw. Drew a copy of a Come Immense. There's a Breeding Pool. It's very clear he does not have an Infect Threat this game. So Ingram's just going to draw a card. Serve in for two. Jessup's down to seven. Pass the turn back. Jessup will draw. Didn't get a great look. It is an Inkbot Nexus, which is uh, part one of this puzzle, but might be too little too late here. Uh, perhaps. Does Ingram want to get aggressive with these burn spells now? I, I mean, I want to cast something on this end step, because his hand's getting a little bottled up with him missing land drops. Uh, feel, Lightning Helix is the way I'm leaning. I like Lightning Helix too. It's not a very efficient spell at battling if Jessup goes and starts attacking. Uh, it's two mana and, and Pingram, Ingram's jammed up on mana as it is. There's a Helix. You know, if I'm in Ingram's spot, if, if it comes down to an attack here from Jessup, I'm looking to fight the stack with Negate, Path, and Bolt. I want the cheapest stuff possible. Helix is the fourth best option in his hand already, and he's already missing land drops. So. Just try to get this thing over with. Negate the draw. 20 to 4 right now in favor of Pete Ingram. More importantly, no infect damage dealt yet this game. 
tough spot for Jessup here is that he's forced to do some blocking. I don't mind a path here from Ingram. To four blocks? Yep. I mean, that, at that point, you, now you're letting bolts lethal. He's going to let him block. The, the other side of this is you can just say, oh, okay, well, well, Jessup is at four, and I've got a bolt in my hand, and I can kind of wait. The problem with a block here is that it allows Jessup to convert a pump spell to trade off with your Snapcaster Mage, and now you might get involved in this fight where there's a stack growing, yeah. where, where Infect plays a little bit better than you do. The thing is, right, is he's got a path. Here's become immense defensively. You don't see that a ton. But he's got, he's got a path and a negate. He can cast both in the same turn. So I mean, we might see him just negate this. Yep. Although, you know, post-board, Jessup's going up to a dispel and up to three copies of Spell Pierce. He becomes yeah. better in these kind of fights post-board. That's true. So even the gate plus path to exile is, is not, it's not a lock that this works out the way that you want it to if you're Ingram. I almost just kind of want to let the Snapcaster die and just say, okay, fine, you win this part. Yeah, there, is, there is some risk in getting involved, spending a lot of mana this way yeah. if you're not 100% sure you're going to be able to kill the Nexus. Yep. Because you can just die on the next turn. That's the thing. Here's vines. I would. Uh, I don't feel comfortable right now if I'm Ingram. I really don't. For as ahead as he's seemed the whole time. I mean, yeah. now, now it's. And you know, Ingram kind of got tripped up in this spot before last game, where he looked ahead but was a little jammed up on mana, and then. When it was time to put all the cards on the table, Jessup was able to win the stack. I've liked everything but this. Because in that spot, I also kind of want to use Bolt a little as opposed to Path. Well, the, the, the argument for holding back the Bolt is, you know, Jessup's got a Verdant Catacombs in play. It's possible he needs to fetch to do whatever he needs to do win this fight. Yep. So having him at an, a, a virtual three is really valuable in having a bolt in your hand. Oh, boy. It's tough. You can see now that this is, now this is the issue is, you know, Ingram's best interaction is in the gate. But if this fails, the shields are down. Yep. Jessup doesn't have that many cards in his hand, but it's not inconceivable. There's Bolt. And one of the things, too, now, I think if you're Jessup, like if you have another Vines or something, you're going to three. Yep. You know, because it, whatever. I'm not playing around with a bolt. I'm going to add a mana. Apostle's Blessing, maybe? Yep. And now, now the bolt's out of hand. Yep. What's this? Oh, yeah, snare. Oh. Okay. Snare, there it goes. Snare's big. I think that's going to be the last piece. Oh, no, he's, well, he's got another thing. Oh, he has one more. He has he a vines. Okay. But this is it. You know, he uses all of his hand to defend this nexus. But I don't think Ingram's hand is great besides here. It's a couple copies of Negate and Nahiri, and, and Jessup has a Pendlehaven as part of his leftovers here. So he's going to be starting to clock for two. Uh, and he's certainly drawing to something like Become Events. Yeah. All right, Andrew's out of that turn alive. Let's go back his way. <laughs> Pedal Haven in hand, draw step. Might have old Croja, I think. He's got a little smile. He never smiles. What is this? Viridian Corruptor. Okay. Sure. It's yep. Here's it's an attack for two. In fact, doubles the clock here. We're going from we're going from two to four. Uh, there are some game winners right here for Ingram. Now here's Nahiri. And Jessup has been putting on quite a performance in these two games. He has. He has. He's going to discard, negate, draw, flooded shred, pass the turn back. Pete Ingram would die this turn depending on what he draws. It, it doesn't take a whole lot. No, it doesn't take much at all. Jessup will draw. Oh, I wouldn't. Uh... Jessup mulliganed this game. I believe he mulliganed the first game. Uh -huh. Ingram's hands have had all sorts of cheap interaction.
don't know what he drew, but I think the question now is where do I go with this? Do I go after Nahiri? Do I go after you? I think you have to ignore Nahiri. You can't kill it. Yep. Right now. So I think you probably have to ignore yeah, it. I, I guess this only gets complicated if he drew a plus two. Yep. Because that allows him to kill Nahiri but not kill Ingram. Yep. So we're talking mutagenic growth. Yeah. Or Groundswell, actually, in this spot. It's only a plus two, not a plus four. Don't have a great look at what he drew, but he's thinking a lot over here. Remember, Andrew Jessup is at one. Lightning Bolt, Lightning Helix, Snapcaster Mage. A lot of cards from Pete Ingram kill him right now. A lot to think about. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious as to what could have been drawn here from Jessup that would warrant this kind of deliberation. Yeah. I think that if he if he bricked, he has to try to kill in two turns. And if he drew something that wins the game, then... It could be something, that, like, could be something like Noble Hierarch. I mean, Noble Hierarch, I just don't even think you would, you would cast necessarily. I guess the thing he's considering here is not attacking with the Viridian Cupter because now Nahiri can't minus to, to kill, kill anything. That said, it feels like you got to get as much infect as you can. Depends what it depends what he feels he's drawing towards at this stage. He also might be weighing the fact that if I attack Nahiri down to two, if you minus it, it's gone mm -hmm. and kills Vrain Corruptor for good. But Nahiri is gone for good. It, it, it Jessup's in this this really weird spot where he kind of doesn't need to even think about what the implications of removal spells are because he's just dead to all of them anyway. So it's just how do you want to manage this Nahiri? Yeah. Hasn't used the Pendle Haven yet. All right, here he goes reaching for it. Okay. Looks like he's just going towards Pete. Yeah, this, uh, this uh, to me, looks right. I, I don't know what he's... Playing around here, or this is a fingers crossed. Hope you break, hope you brick twice. That's what it feels like. Colonnade is the first brick. That's a draw step for Ingram. Now it's decision making time for Pete. Do I want to draw or just kill this? He just I, wants to kill that. Why I, I like this play from Ingram because he just threw the colonnade. Now next turn he plays a land, and, just and now the colonnade's on lethal. defense. He's yep. ready to block. Or yeah, he can you just can attack just with him. it. Yep. Oh, he's reaching fast. What's this? Taxian probe. Ooh, redraws. No way. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm negating the heck out of this. Oh, sure. Yep. Okay, never mind. I just don't think the card that he drew is good. Because like, I don't know what he drew that he wouldn't play. Yeah, well, it could be Noble Hierarch, and now he could peel another Noble Hierarch and negate doesn't do anything. I guess okay. that's theoretically possible. Because I wouldn't have played Noble Hierarch last turn if that was Jessup's draw step. All right. Activate. Attack. Pump. Ingram had mana up last turn, right? No? Not sure. Oh, no. La last turn was the... Uh, tap out from the hearing? Yep. Okay. Back to Pete. Plus Nahiri. A lot of game. Nope. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Sacrifice Flooded Strand first. Let's see what Lanny wants to dig out of the old deck here. Tight game. Yes. I mean, I don't think there's anything Jessup can do in this spot because his only removal for uh, a colony is Dismember, and he can't afford to cast that right now. Yep. Plus Nahiri. Discard, Scalding Tarn, draw, Dispel, which is right. a that should, That yeah. is a doozy. If that doesn't do it, I don't, I don't know how you're beating Jessup. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Dispel's not good enough. Activate Colonnade to finish it off. Pete Ingram, Andrew Jessup, all tied up here, going to game number three. These two games have been insanely close. Yep. Jeez. I, I feel like 
Jessup seems a little bit more comfortable with the with the stacks and the sequencing. Yeah. Ingram feels he's playing. Uh, to me, it seems like he's fail, playing a little bit draw step to draw step, and Jessup has a plan mapped out. Pretty unreal. Yeah. Jeez. Well, take a look at the sideboard here. What do you see? Anything? I mean, it's the same story as before. You know, the, for me, the, the question for Jessup's side is, does he want Spell Pierce? The Spell is a hard counter for the card he cares about most. Spell Pierce will work some percentage of the time and won't in others. Um, and, and that, to me, is really the only question mark. Yeah, I'm curious about, you know, just the counter spells on each side and how many they want and stuff like that because the interaction is so cheap. So, you know, most of these counter spells that Jessup has access to would be replacing pump spells. So you have to, they had to be pretty, they had to be pretty good for you to bring in. Um, because Spell Pierce is sometimes dead, but cards like Apostle's Bledicing and Might of Volcrosia fizzle removal spells in much the same way. Dispel is in a different camp because it always works no matter how much mana is available. Uh, Spell Pierce, a little bit weaker. All right, well, game number three, last match of the day, which means, Patrick, mm -hmm. last ad of the day. And it's got to be for Modern Week, of course. Grand Prix Los Angeles being hosted by Channel Fireball and Grand Prix Charlotte being hosted by StarCityGames.com. It's next weekend. We hope to see you there. You can learn more about that tournament right now. On May 20th through the 22nd, make plans to be part of Modern Weekend and Magic the Gathering history when StarCityGames.com proudly presents Grand Prix Charlotte. Register for the Modern Format main event to compete for thousands of dollars in prizes and receive an exclusive playmat featuring Jace as he pours over the pages of Tomio's journal. Select the three-day infinite challenge package to compete in all challenge events for one low price, while also walking away with the exclusive Jace playmat. Add a premium rewards package and take home a collectible pin, deck box, 80 count pack of sleeves, and playmat, all featuring the iconic Noble Hierarch. Play and select side events for even more chances to win additional Noble Hierarch pins, deck boxes, sleeves, and playmats all weekend long. And don't forget to come say hello to Grand Prix Charlotte's many special guests, including cosplayer Christine Sprinkle and an artist alley full of fan favorites, headlined by guest of honor Rob Alexander. Be part of Modern Weekend and Magic the Gathering history. Register for Grand Prix Charlotte today. Don't know a deck I'm planning on playing Charlotte. It could be one of these two. Maybe I'll just play whoever wins this tournament, huh? You seem like the kind of guy who get behind in fact deck. Nah, that's for some reason, I just okay. can't figure it out. It's got your two favorite things. Okay. One, just a uh, high frequency of blowing people out of the water. Love that. And also plenty of opportunities to trick people or otherwise outplay them or otherwise outplay, in quotes, them. Love that too. Yeah. <laughs> you know me way too well. Let's run away here to game three. Joseph's going to start things off with an Ink Moth next. It's a pretty important start there. There's a breeding pool. Yeah, it's his best card in the matchup. You know, it allows him to control the terms of engagement. Sit back, build up a hand, wait for Ingram to commit to something, and then try to attack a little bit, fend off the removal spells. Also, the Nexus makes it very challenging for Ingram to tap out for Nahiri. Yeah, because he just dies. He just dies. Yeah, he just that's, die. That's just how that works. Ingram will draw. Yeah, trying to figure out one land. Gotta go with Colony. Fast to turn back. Over to Andrew we go. Dispel in hand. Nice card for the matchup, that's for sure. Ink Moth Nexus. Fire up this one. Serve on in. It's always so scary being attacked by an infect creature, even if it's the first attack. Yep. Well, I mean, you don't want to bolt here and get, get tagged by something. Probably just take this hit, bolt end of turn. Okay. There's your bolt. Dispel or spell, Pierce? Dispel. Back to Ingram. Two Nahiri's in hand. Yeah. And if Jessup is using a Dispel over a Spell Pierce, it's showing a lot of respect for Nahiri on the other side. All right. Because that's really the only card that's, that's changed by that. Yep. Reverting Catacombs. Fire it up. Coming on in.
Ingram willing to make a move. Nope. I think this is the same deal as before. Take the shot, use the removal spell in a turn. There's Glistener off. Best part about this is you just have no idea the strength of Jessup's hand. Yep. You feel like you could die at any moment, or his hand could just be garbage. And right now, we have a decent look at his hand. This is one of the decks in Modern where uh, the power level would be way different if you could just see your opponent's hand the whole time. <laughs> yeah, it's really true. Some decks that doesn't really matter very much, and there, there are some decks like this where their, their cards are all over the place, and if you ever guess wrong, you're dead. Yep. Lightning Bolt on the end step here from Snapcaster Mage. Is going to go after that Ink Moth Nexus that just dealt Ingram one point of infect damage. Is Jessup willing to use a Spell Pierce or an Apostle's Blessing? Looks like yes. Uh, you know, Jessup's hand right now is uh, does not have a lot of pump going on in it. Uh, so I think he is incentivized to keep every Nexus alive because he might have to go wide here and just attack with the two Nexus he has to play. I believe he has a third one in hand even. Mm -hmm. So. Ideally, you would like to use your preservation spells when you're pumping up a bunch and trying to go for a kill in one shot. I, I don't think Jessup's hand right now is conducive to that, so he's just got to protect all of his nexuses. Use the spell, Pierce. Spell Snare the Draw. Land number four. Is Ingram willing to tap out for Nahiri and start to play this sub game? The answer is no. And Jessup will draw. If Ingram could see Jessup's hand, would have probably tapped out from Nahiri. Although, Jessup just drew vines, so who knows? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair enough. I guess you have to be able to see their hand in the top of their deck. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot of information. Yeah. <laughs> you need glasses of Urza, plus whatever lets you look at the top of their deck. Telepathy. Jace the Mind Sculptor. Ah, oh, sure. <laughs> or whatever. Just that one. Yep. I don't know. You know what would be really good against Infect is Wandering Eye. It's flying blocker, point of power, see their hand. Yep. Not legal, though. That's too bad. Quietly one of the all-time worst magic designs. <laughs> <laughs> Here come the Ink Moths. A lightning bolt's going to go after this one. And down it goes. Jessup's not even going to fight. Not really worth a fight when he's not even in a position to activate the third one yet. So... Uh, th that one he can afford to let go. Ingram's up to three, in fact. Going to sacrifice a Scalding Tarn, search up the land. Here's your steam vents. Colors of mana not going to be an issue. That's for sure. Let's go back Pete's way, shall we? He'll take a draw step. Colonnade's what he's found. That'll be land five for him this game. And now I think he might have to pull the trigger. Uh, th this is the problem. Ingram's hand right now is not really a path towards anything. He's got Nahiri's and counter spells. So he's just going to get chipped by these Ichbon Nexuses. The longer and longer it goes with him not being able to interact, the more likely he is to have to cast Nahiri to help out his hand. And the lower he goes in infect damage, the longer he waits, the more likely it is that Jessup just kills him when his shields are down or low. So when do you make your move? That's the question. It seems like right now the sooner the better. I, I think Ingram's hand is bad enough that he might have had to make the move last turn. Okay. Because he's facing down two threats without any removal spells in his hand. So even if he top decks a path or a bolt or something, he's not even out of the woods. Misty Rainforest. Activate Ink Moth Nexus. Beatdowns. Ingram have any responses? Nope. What Andrew Jessup would give for a Pendlehaven this game. Pendlehaven, Noble Hierarch. Yeah. Steam Vents into this battlefield untapped real fast for Pete Ingram. 
Well, this is now a path for him to maybe defend himself a little bit. Oh, well, there's Nahiri. Up to six. Discard another Nahiri. Is Emrakul going to arrive soon as Jessup will sacrifice Mr. Rainforest on his upkeep? And you know, if, if Ingram can get out of this turn without too much bad happening, he then gets Colonnade on defense. And Nahiri getting to Emrakul very fast. So there's a path here for Ingram if he can get out of this one turn. To Andrew Jessup we go. He'll draw. I think it may have been a Noble. Noble is a big draw here. There's what at Foothills. And here comes Noble Hierarch. Andrew Jessup might be able to make his move right now. Ingram only has two mana. Not a lot of mana to interact with. Yep. And Jessup's left over here is Apostle's Blessing besides the Vines. Apostle Blessing, very good at fighting this if Ingram's answer is a removal spell. Yeah. But if Ingram has a counter spell to dead end the Vines, then the Apostle's Blessing isn't worth a whole lot. That's correct. Basic Forest. Very tight. And it's not even like Ingram has the game sewn up if he gets out of this turn. No, he just gets to play on. Right. Activate Nexus. Here we go. Did that trigger get announced? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's a big one here. Uh, I hope so. Six in fact versus five in fact is a lot in the spot. Looks like Jessup's making his move. He's hoping it's a removal spell, not a counter spell, as there is a Vines of the Vastwood being used aggressively. You see Dispel in the hand for Pete Ingram, however. This is lethal, folks. Yep. Yeah. Assuming, again, the trigger got announced. Yeah, let's, assume, let's, assume, <laughs> let's assume it did. That's a big one let's here. Let's assume it did. For, for what it's worth, I like going for it this turn. He's got a lot of pump spells in his deck. He hasn't drawn any. So if this one gets countered, the chances of him just drawing another one next turn, I don't know, pretty high. It's also a lot more can happen for six mana than for two. Absolutely. He gets two, draw, he gets two draws between his draw step and Nahiri. So uh, I think it's worth going for it. And it's not even like he's beat if it fails, because next turn he still has the Blessing back in hand. He can play over the top of a removal spell or a colonnade back on defense, and he's drawing to a plus four. Looks like Engineered Explosives may have been the draw. That's an interesting one. I'm going to start by plussing Nahiri. Discarding. It looks like maybe Arid Mesa. Maybe. Maybe. It's a tough discard. I keep, I keep looking at the spells there and saying, thinking to myself, it's not going to do very much, but it's actually pretty good against Blessing. Oh, there it is. Path to Exile. There, I think that's that could be the last piece of it right there. Pete will pass the turn back. Time he, to D up. Yep. Yeah. Ingram is not even facing lethal. And has access to a blocker plus a removal spell. Mm -hmm. And he's threatening to kill next turn. Jessup will draw. We know he's got Apostle's Blessing. He's played such a good match so far. Yes. Just looks like he might come up a little short here again in the finals. But we don't know what that other card is just yet. And uh, this is kind of what Nahiri does. It feels like the terms of engagement for this matchup are all dictated on the infect side until Nahiri gets to eight. And then it's, yeah. all right, you got to put your cards on the table. <laughs> Pretty much. you got to do something this turn. It just brings a completely different element to a control deck that yep. took forever to win before. Now it takes no time at all. 
If it weren't for Nahiri, Jessup could just be sitting here drawing cards and waiting. Yeah, let's just go back and forth for yeah. a while. Keep my chip shots going on. I'll work it down eventually. You might make a mistake. Hard to make a mistake with Emrakul having haste. The question is, does Jessup even have, is there even a mistake for Ingram to make at this point? Uh-huh. Because Jessup doesn't even have lethal on the table right now. Jessup's activated one Nexus. He'll activate another, it appears. Jessup doesn't give away a lot emotionally. You can't tell if he's happy or sad. We'll see where these creatures are going, if it's Nahiri or Pete. You know, if he has a pump spell, he can play, he can basically allow the colony to block one of the two, and if he has a pump spell, he can pump the unblock one and use Apostle's Blessing. He's going after Nahiri. And if he's going after Nahiri, then it's very safe here for Ingram to use removal spells inside of combat because there's no there's no downside. Not there's no die. risk. Yeah. yeah. So he may want to path the Nexus that's unblocked right now. If it resolves, you win the game next turn. If it fails to resolve, not the end of the world. Your Nahiri just goes down to seven. Uh-huh. Nahiri down to seven. Colonnade becomes a three-three thanks to an infect counter. Pass the turn back. Ingram might cast Path. He will cast Path. Jessup. Will cast Apostle's Blessing. Uh, gets a little worse if you show it to him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, he has the backup plan here of allowing this to resolve and saying, all right, I'll use Apostle's Blessing on the Glistener Elf next turn, set to blue. I can pass by your Snapcaster Mage and your Colonnade that way. Try to kill you that way? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, Snapcaster the draw. Snapcaster Mage. <laughs> <laughs> See what Ingram's going to discard here. Bye-bye Spell Snare. Draw a card. Colonnade. Engineered Explosives. Activate. The one mana creatures are gone. Snapcaster Mage is coming across. We had a feeling that Nahiri might be bringing Emrakul with it to Shadows over Innistrad, but it just brought Pete Ingram a victory here in Indianapolis. Congratulations to him as he is our Indianapolis Open champion.